Time keeps on leaving and we keep on moving. When do we pass on our wisdom to the youth? My veteran story lost our discussions. Fireside chats with the bourbon or two. It's time to hear the story by military veterans. Get yourself ready. It's the Lost Arts Podcast. The Lost Arts with Andrew Cox. Hello, hello, my friends, and welcome back to the Lost Art Podcast. That podcast is given a voice to our veterans. On today's episode, we have Army veteran, retired Sergeant First Class, and founder of Project Die Hard, Brian Gibson. He's going to be on here to discuss his veteran story and to give us a little more insight into Project Die Hard. But before we get into his veteran story, are you enjoying the podcast? Then consider being a TLA patron. That's the Lost Arts patron. It is with donors that we are able to continue recording these podcasts and getting our veteran voices out for all to hear. Just go to the Lost Art website and click on the Become a Patron link. Any donations are appreciated. If you'd like to be a guest on our podcast and tell your story, then email me at the lost art with Andrew Cox at gmail.com. All right, without further ado, please welcome Brian Gibson. Brian, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm hanging in there, brother. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. I can't complain today. Well, if you complained, who would listen? That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, it, it seems to be that way uh, quite a bit, but that's okay. That's all right. So, um, Brian, let's let's go back to the beginning for you. Like, what was it that that brought you to want to join the army? Uh, and what was that transition like? And where where like where'd you go to boot camp? Those types of things. Okay. Well, first off, uh, I come from a military family. Okay. If you are a able-bodied male, you don't have to make a career, but you will serve. Mm-hmm. The funny part of that one was my grandfather. He served in World War II with the 1st Infantry Division. Mm-hmm. And at every holiday meal, right, if you didn't serve and you're a male, you got to sit at the kitty table. Oh, Wow. So, yeah, a very patriotic family. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's now, that's amazing. I, I, yeah, I was born in Traverse City, Michigan, because my father was a drill instructor with the Navy. Oh, no kidding. Okay. Yeah, I grew up in a Navy family. Nice. Okay. Yeah, traveled all the way around the world with the family. The last duty station my father had was the Ghost Fleet in Bremerton, Washington. Very nice. Yeah, at 12 years old, I was playing on the Missouri. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's incredible. Well, when my mother said, take these animals, right? Yeah. Because I, I got... 13 siblings. Uh, yeah, dad would take us out to a ship, put us on, says, don't break anything, and I'll be back at lunch. <laughs> he just say, run around, huh? <laughs> yep. Oh, well, that's pretty well, awesome. Well, my father stuck me and my brothers on a tiger cruise. And that's when I realized that I don't swim that well. <laughs> So my mother's side of the family is Army. Mm-hmm. So I went and I joined the United States Army. When I told my father, he goes, great. You going to San Diego or Great Lakes? And I went, Fort Jackson. <laughs> and he yeah. went, that's an Army base. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so that's where I went to basic, Fort Jackson, South Carolina, 1985. Okay, very nice. Uh, uh, had you been stationed in the South before? 
no. Okay. Uh, so no. so you weren't used to the heat and all that type of stuff that they had down there? Oh, no. And I hit right in the prime time. <laughs> right in July. Here you go. Right in the middle of it, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and it, you almost were swimming in, really. If you think about it, you were swimming through all the heat and, and the humidity. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was... That was fun, especially that cattle car ride. Mm. <laughs> Gotta love that. So how, how was boot camp for you? Uh, to me, it was fine. The bad part was my older brother joined the Army, too, right? Yeah. And he actually went through the same boot camp company the cycle before me. Oh, really? Wow. Same same drill sergeants, everything, right? Uh-huh. And then the drill sergeants go, Gibson looked at me and said, do you have a brother named Dale? I went, yes, drill sergeant. <laughs> he goes, drop and give me 50. <laughs> yeah, my brother was not the best soldier. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so you had, you got to pay a little bit for him. Oh yeah, yeah. Very nice. So, so I, after that, yeah, I graduated basic and I went out to Fort Sam Houston, Texas. Okay. And what oh, was that for your medical school? corps? What was it? Yep. Fort Sam Houston is a home of the United States Army Medical Corps. Uh, actually, it's where every branch trains. Oh, even okay. Your, even your devil docs come yeah. to San Antonio to learn to be medics. Okay. Very neat. Uh, so, so how long was that school? Uh, that was 14 weeks. Okay. Yeah, the the fun part about that was, uh, I think it was module 12. That's where we give and receive all the shots, right? Oh, okay. We learn how to do all the IVs, the shots. Mm -hmm. And my partner, her name was, last name was Gooch. And she was maybe... Five four, yeah, in ninety eight pounds. Oh my goodness! So I'm sitting there trying to start IVs and all that, and this little girl. So uh, I'm pretty good at that because <laughs> I learned on one of the hardest patients you could find. Yeah. <laughs> so trying to find a vein on on uh, somebody that small is, I'm sure, is very difficult. Oh, yeah, but training works. Yeah. So after graduating AIT, mm -hmm. I get sent to Fort Stewart, Georgia. Okay. Everybody goes, oh, South Carolina was humid? No, try Georgia. <laughs> So, so the South Carolina was just a leading uh, leading up to giving you a small dose of what Georgia had to offer then. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Georgia, summertime, you do PT, you're sweating your cojones off, you go uh -huh. take a shower, put on the uniform, that nice starched old BDU thing. Right. And as soon as you step outside, all the starch says, nope, I'm not staying here. And <laughs> you look like a drowned rat. <laughs> oh man! Uh, and then what? Uh, what unit were you with there? I was with the Third Engineer Battalion. Okay. And how 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 did you like that? And what what were some of the things you remember there? Uh, I remember great people, and my first ambulance was a gamma goat. You said Gamma Goat? Yeah. 
Okay, all your listeners need to look up Gamma Goat. Okay. I'm going to have to look it up, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was fun. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, when you look at that vehicle, you will try to figure out, how was that an ambulance? (laughs) (laughs) That's what it was. Oh, man. So, uh, and then you were there for how long? Uh, four years. Four years? Yeah. And then the Army went, okay, time to move. And then I was sent to Germany. Okay. That's nice. Yeah. So I get over to Germany in the repo depot, you know, and... You know, processing all that. And they go, right. oh, you're a medic. I was supposed to go to the base hospital in Nuremberg. But the 2nd Armored Cavalry Regiment had a request for a medic. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. One of their supporting units was the 84th Engineer Company. Okay. Now, the 84th Engineer Battalion at that time was in Hawaii. Mm. But they had a company in Germany. Right. So their TO and E changed, and next thing I know, I'm heading to Bayreuth, Germany. Mm. To the 84th Engineer Company, 2nd Armored Cavalry Regiment. Very nice. Okay, I like it. Yeah. I show up, report in, and they go, oh, you're the medic. Yeah. And they show me this little office with a bunch of boxes. Here's your aid station. <laughs> I had to set it up. Oh, nice. Right. <laughs> they take me out to the motor pool to show me the ambulance. That was a uh, old APC 113. Uh-huh. Right? I know you've seen those. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, it was on a flatbed. Okay. Uh, You had the chassis, the engine was out front, the tracks were on the side, the road wheels were stacked. Right. And they go, oh, by the way, in three weeks, we have an IG inspection. Oh, no. (laughs) And they, they really hooked you up. Coming in there. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I was their first medic. <laughs> wow. Well, the good thing is you didn't have to go back in all the records very far. I mean, if you were the first one. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Well, I made friends real quick with the motor pool. And bought a lot of pizza and beer. Yeah. But at the IG... My ambulance was perfect. Nice. Okay. <laughs> so put, yeah, putting in the extra time and then putting in the, the extra pizza and beer for folks uh, helped out quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's one That's one Benny about being a medic. Uh, like my first tour, well, we'll get there. From... The Second Armored Cavalry Regiment, right, spent a total of five years there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, you're only supposed to do three, but I love Germany. Yeah. I actually uh, married a German girl, had a daughter. Okay. And if you didn't know I was in the Army, you wouldn't have known. Cause I oh, really? On the, yeah, I lived on the economy with her. My car was registered with her, so it had German plates. Wow. <laughs> you know. So, yeah. So I learned, to speak, I learned to speak German because my in-laws didn't speak English. Right, yeah. <laughs> so what was your, uh, your favorite parts about Germany itself? Oh, being able to travel. Yeah. All right, I'm a history buff. Mm-hmm. 
the stone wall in my backyard was built in the 1300s. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, you know how everybody takes leave and they say, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go home, right? Yeah. No, no, I didn't. I got a Euro pass. I went to Italy, France, mm-hmm. Belgium. I traveled. Yeah, that's smart. I mean, you're, you don't get to go to go to other countries very often. Uh, at least I didn't growing up. Uh, so take full advantage of it. That's what I say. Mm-hmm. Everybody says, well, why don't you want to go home? I said, I lived there for 17 years. <laughs> I know what home is. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. So be it. Yeah. So you stayed uh, five years in Germany, and were you with the same unit the whole time? Yeah. Uh, okay. That was until the Army went to computers and realized, why are you still in Germany? <laughs> They got I you. Great ad- I had some great admin folks. Yeah. Change one digit on a UIC and, you know. Uh-huh. Well, from there, Germany, right? Uh-huh. They sent me to Fort Riley, Kansas. Okay. The Big Red One. Big Red One, that's now, right. I told you... That my grandfather served with the Big Red One in World War Two, right? Right. Well, that was the time of Desert Storm. Okay. So at Desert Storm, my grandfather served with the Big Red One in World War Two. Mm-hmm. My uncle, his son, served with the Big Red One in Vietnam. Oh wow. And I served with the Big Red One. In Desert Storm. Man, that's pretty wild. So, yeah, three generations served in combat with the 1st Infantry Division. Wow. Now, that's some history there. Yeah. Well, Big Red One, I was assigned to the 1st Engineer Battalion. You see a stretch here? Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> it seems like you uh, got along well with the uh, engineers. Oh, I loved them. Yeah. I loved my engineers. Those guys were great. Uh, now, you said uh, you deployed with them. Uh, how was the deployment yep. for you? Well, that was a hit and a miss. Okay. You know, Desert Storm, we sat there and we waited and waited and waited. Yeah. And then we hit off. Mm hmm. Now, we train, right? Mm hmm. But you never know what you're going to do until that first firefight. Right. Mm hmm. It's very true. Medic. That was the first time I actually had to zip up a body bag. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's a that's definitely uh does something to your mind, affects you pretty heavily whenever you're you're uh dealing with stuff like that for the first time especially. Yeah, well as a medic, as I like to tell people, I've seen the worst thing that man can do to man. Mm -hmm. Zipping up a body bag is the end result. Yeah. Somebody asked, well, how many lives have you saved in all your tours? And I go, I don't know, but I've lost 28 of them. Wow. We don't count the saves. That's right. Yeah. In my total career, I've lost 28 in combat. And that was all, you said that was all due to combat? Well, yeah, Desert Storm was my first junket to the Middle East. (laughs) Gotcha. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, how long total were you over Desert Storm? 
Uh, Desert Storm or Desert Shield Desert Storm was about nine months. Nine months total. Yeah. Well, like, it, during that time, uh -huh. I get the Dear John letter. Uh oh. Mm hmm. Gotta love those. Yeah, apparently Claudia didn't realize that I was a soldier and that I go off to war. Uh huh. Yeah. So she left me, went back to Germany, took my daughter. Mm -hmm. So the last time I saw my daughter, she was six months old. Oh, wow. Yep. That's, that's crazy. Um, and you haven't seen her since, huh? Nope. Wow. Uh, we get back from Desert Storm, and, you know, right after Desert Storm, they did that early out, right? Mm-hmm. Well, I didn't have an intention on that until after my command denied my leave when we got back, so mm -hmm. I could go save my marriage. Uh. So when the early out rolled around, I went, yep, thank you, goodbye. Mm -hmm. Well... I bounced around, bounced around, bounced around. And I didn't know, but my grandfather had an open-ended Greyhound ticket for me. Okay. And when I finally got fed up and I called him because, you know, hey, grandfather, war veteran, who knows better, right? He goes, okay, you done pouting? Get back, <laughs> here to, get back here to the house. Yeah. So I got back there, and he got me back right. That's good. Mm-hmm. Well, to a point. <laughs> to a point, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he convinced me, you're a medic, blah, blah, blah. So I went, took the test, did all the stuff, and became a paramedic. Okay. In the civilian world. Right. Well, my mother's hometown is called Meadville, Pennsylvania. Okay. You know where channel lock tools are made? No. Meadville, Pennsylvania. All right. That's good to know. When I was there. When I was there, they put in their second stoplight. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> mm -hmm. Real big city. Yeah, well, <laughs> after traveling the world and realizing I couldn't do anything without everybody knowing what I was doing, <laughs> I went to my grandfather and said, hey, this ain't going to work. Yeah. So I answered an ad for an ambulance company in Reading, Pennsylvania. Okay. Yeah, everybody knows the Reading Railroad. Right. That's the Reading Railroad on Monopoly. The okay. Reading. That's where that came from. Well, I get there, I get settled in, and I'm just out and about, and I went out to this bar to get a beer, mm -hmm. and uh, this, I was looking for some you-know-what, uh -huh. and this one very uh, large woman was uh -huh. sitting on me, and I was like, hmm, possibly. <laughs> Night's getting long. But that's when I met my current wife. Uh, the first night I spent with her, I actually felt peace. She, she's, she's my soulmate. She's the rock. Right. 
she's the one because by the time I left Desert Storm and all that, I had like 10 years in. Right. She's the one that said, look, you bleed green. Mm-hmm. You're doing everything for the family, but I know you're not happy. And she is the one that set up the appointment with the Army recruiter and got me back into the Army. Oh, okay. <laughs> Very nice. Mm-hmm. So kind of kind of the opposite then. So uh, your first wife didn't uh, didn't really like it at all. Second wife said, "Hey, you need to do this." Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I didn't go back active. I went back to the reserve. Okay. Right. Pull pull around to move around. And then Kosovo, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. I I think I I've done more deployments in the reserve than I did active duty. Oh wow. Yeah. It's pretty wild well, how that kind of works out, huh? Yeah. Well, the big one was September 11th. Yeah. And I was assigned to the 744th MP Battalion okay. Reserve Unit. We were a specialty battalion, internment battalion. Yeah, there were only four battalions in the whole army that did our job. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. And our colonel missed out on Desert Storm, so he volunteered us to go. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I actually got to invade Iraq twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jay, you went back to your old stomping grounds. That's what happened there. Oh, yeah, that was funny. Now, I was uh, E6 at that time. Okay. And in that whole battalion, there was four of us that had combat patches. Oh, wow. You know, all through Desert Storm, right? Mm Mm-hmm. So we're getting ready to pack up and do all of our stuff and... One of my troops goes, hey, Sergeant, why are you packing all that cold weather gear? (laughs) Yeah. I said, you might want to pack yours. Yeah. But being a reserve unit, they did what they wanted to do, Mm -hmm. right? Mm Mm-hmm. So we deploy. We get to Kuwait. Our equipment was late, so uh, we got to invade Iraq in Kuwaiti dump trucks. Oh, wow. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. That's wild. Yeah, we went up to Nazaria and set up our first compound. Okay. Did our job. We were there for about six months. Mm -hmm. We were a transshipment point for prisoners. Yeah. They would find them on the front, send them to us. We would classify them, cut some loose, send some down to Abu Ghraib. Mm-hmm. Uh, I actually had to do an Article 42 hearing on that. Oh, wow. Yeah, you, you know that story when they were beating up the prisoners and stuff? Right, yeah. 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 Well, some of those guys came through our our system. Oh, okay. And when you're uh, when you're doing the medical, you keep records. Mm-hmm. We kept records on how they came into us and how they left us. Right. Yeah. 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 So yeah, I got rolled up in that. Okay. 
Then after that, they sent us up to Baghdad. Okay. Where we ran the high-value detainee compound. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Saddam was diabetic. Really? Yep. Huh. I, I've tested his blood sugar more than once. No kidding. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's pretty wild. Yeah, it was just part of the job. Yeah. The bad part was all the looky loos looking over my shoulder, making sure we didn't abuse them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you had a lot of practice, right? You had a lot of practice sticking people with needles. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 Well, needless to say, we did that. We did law and order. We, we did a lot. Right, yeah. I remember getting chewed out from my sergeant major mm -hmm. because we had a lot of little outpost, right? Yeah. And I would go out and ride a patrol, swing by those places and check how my medics were doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. It's called that's called being a leader. Yeah. You're the NCOIC. You're not split yet. I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm a medic. Yeah. I would go do ops and leave one of my medics back at battalion to run the aid station. Mm -hmm. Why do you do that? Well, they're tired. Yeah. <laughs> I give them a break. I got to give them a break. Mm -hmm. That's leadership 101. Yeah. Take care of your troops. That's right. <laughs> wow. So he chewed well, you out for it, huh? Oh, yeah. 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 And then we're getting, well, here's the rub on this one. Uh -huh. Remember I said there were four battalions that did our job? Right. Yeah. We drew the short straw. Uh-huh. Yeah, they sent three of the battalions back to refit. And okay. Then, yeah, I got to spend a total of 19 months in Iraq. Holy cow. Mm-hmm. That's a long go. Yeah. I, I only yeah. did, uh, was it r right around eight months, seven, seven and a half, something like that? And uh, that was long enough. I couldn't even imagine doing 19. Yeah, well, when there's only four battalions in the whole army that did our mission. Yeah. And you had a colonel that was ippity hoppity to get us down range. Uh-huh. And then he wanted all the medals. Yeah. He volunteered us to stay while the other battalions went back and refitted. Holy cow. And then one came back and relieved us. Man, that's a that is a long go. So how how did uh how did everybody in the unit hold up doing it that long? Was it like a lot of like mental uh, instability or anything or? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, we had to send a couple home mm -hmm. to, you know. The funny story on that one was uh, one of the female MPs went home on R&R, &R, right? Mm -hmm. Went on their two-week leave. She came back. She goes, you got to send me home again. I'm like, why? I'm pregnant. Oh, no. I said... Oh, okay. Well, I can keep you here through your first trimester. Yeah. And we're we're redeploying within your first trimester. So mm -hmm. go help pack a Connex. Wow. <laughs> yeah, she was trying to use that to, you to know, get out early. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. So, hey, you did mention earlier uh, how you were telling them that uh, 
or they asked you why you were packing your cold weather gear. Uh, how did that turn out for those that did not pack their cold weather gear? Because I know when I went through, uh, and I was I went from uh, uh, Kuwait up to Ramadi, and that drive up there was probably the coldest I've ever been in my life. I mean, it was ridiculous. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. They learned real fast. <laughs> they were wishing they had their gear, huh? <laughs> yeah, we tried to tell them. Look, yeah. during the day. The sun's out. Deserts are hot. Yeah. But sand doesn't retain heat. Jeez. That's right. When the sun goes down. <laughs> yeah. It, goes. yeah. I was. I it, couldn't believe yeah. how cold it was when I was there. I, it was amazing. Now, don't get me wrong. It got hot as well. Uh, but just in contrast, that cold was, it seemed even more cold than like if there's snow on the ground. <laughs> Well, it, well, it it's the contrast. Yeah. Yeah. It could it could be. Yeah. It got hot during the day. Yeah. And everybody goes. So how cold did it get? I said, it got around sixty. Mm-hmm. That's not cold. Well, when you're working in a hundred and thirty. <laughs> yeah. It is. <laughs> it's a big temperature change. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was one of the things that I was not ready for. I, I, like, I had all my cold weather gear, but I, it was just mentally I was not prepared for that. Oh, of course. Of course. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, people don't realize when you get into northern Iraq, it actually snows. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's so, not a desert. <laughs> so how long did you spend in Baghdad itself? That was about 10 months. 10 months? Yeah. And then yeah, what, the, what were the uh, years on that? Like what, when were you there? 2003, 2004. Okay. Right. Gotcha. Well, is there... Uh, Anything else that you want to address or whatever about your time uh, on that deployment? Well, that deployment was something I learned about PTSD and flashbacks. So I went through Desert Storm, right? Mm hmm. Zipped up a couple body bags. Yeah. Because people think, oh, Desert Storm was... No, Desert Storm was a war. Mm-hmm. There were firefights. Yeah, people absolutely. People were killed. Medics did our job. Well, there was one instance during the 03 deployment that put me into a... The smell. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. The smell. Uh, mm. Yeah, that that was a flashback. While one of my deployments, uh-huh. the co-worker of one of my wives asked, why does your husband go and do that? Oh, okay. And she goes, well, your son's 18. Yeah. And he's registered for the draft, right? Yeah. She goes, yeah. She goes, my husband goes and do does that, so your son doesn't have to have the nightmares. To all the listeners out there, I want to thank you for joining us on today's podcast. As a reminder for all veterans, if you are struggling and need assistance in any way, please reach out for help. The VA has an incredible website and helplines to assist you in your time of need. Just go to the Veterans Crisis Line.net. That's the Veterans Crisis Line.net. There are several ways of reaching out for assistance through the VA. For a crisis emergency, just dial 988 and then press 1. Again, dial 988 and then press 1. You can also chat online by going to Veterans Crisis Line.net and clicking on the chat icon. 
You can also text for assistance at 838-255. Again, that's 838-255. All calls are confidential and you only have to discuss what you feel comfortable discussing. If you are in need of help, don't hesitate to call. You matter to me and all of your veteran community. One veteran suicide is one too many. Thanks again for tuning in. Don't forget, there are new episodes of the Lost Art with Andrew Cox podcast daily, Monday through Friday. Stay motivated and change your socks. Uh-huh.